Good morning, traders. I'm Dennis Deck. And I'm Joel Alconin. Welcome to Pre-Market Info. Monday morning, S&P futures down a point here, Joel, and you're back. How's it going? It's going pretty good, pretty good. I, I see the market uh, resumed its uh, normal path on Friday, even though I wasn't <laughs> here going up. Uh, maybe a little up, expiration up buying. Yep, a little expiration buying. Uh, new high for the move at uh, 16.65.75. Uh, we backed off a little bit from that in the pre-market, 64.50 high. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that uh, early in the session. Coming back on the downside, just don't see a lot of support here until you get down to the 1658 level. Yeah, but you know how this market goes. It seems like it's uh, that March higher, March higher. So support doesn't even matter half the time in this market because it just keeps finding up and getting up to the old high and then taking it out again. This has been like the broken record. Every day we seem like we come in, we're down a couple of bucks. By the end of the day, we're up 10 points. So I don't know if that's going to happen again, but that has been the pattern. Uh, not been the pattern for gold, though, Joel. Let's go into the GLD here because, wow, um, it obviously had some wicked selling um, there. Well, if you go into the futures, we actually got very close to those lows that we made on the original 200 point down move on Friday. We didn't quite breach a new low, did we? I think we were just slightly off. No, no, we're we're approaching that low. Uh, eight straight days down in the gold market. Kind of interesting story in Barron's. Uh, they were talking about uh, just the dumping of uh, the GLD on, uh, on the COMEX and also in the ETF. And uh, lo and behold, I know we talk about our conspiracy theories a lot, but uh, someone had uh, some large positions in puts on the GLD, and it just happened to expire. They were probably like 132 puts, so they just got in there, and they were just dumping on the exchange. Wow. Uh, you know, yeah, through their filings, you can read it in Barron's. It's on the Up and Down Wall Street uh, article. So, you know, things that, you know, go on in the market, we talk about them, but then, you know, you see what they happened uh afterwards we're going to the futures here uh, we have not made a new low of the move yet the low of the move is 1320 uh, noted analyst and uh, Barron's also said he's looking for a June bottom perhaps around the, the 1284 level uh, but uh, if you're trying to pick a bottom here everybody does trying to gold market uh, got a reference at 32150 level uh, that was the low of the move on April 16th. But silver is making new lows and making new lows again here this morning. If we bring up the chart on the SLV or the silver futures, whichever you like, $20.99 is where SLV is trading this morning. Close at 21.40. So this is making new lows, unlike the gold. Breaking down here, uh, wow, not good for silver bulls. Uh it silver never got the bounce when the gold nope. had the uh, the bounce off the lows in April. So maybe before you get too excited about the gold market here, maybe just wait for the silver to stop going down here. Probably uh, on the weeklies, you don't have anything in the SLV uh, going down. You got to think about twenty. I know you talk about psychological yeah. levels here. Uh, that could be a level. Uh, went through the October of 2010 low, smashed through that. Uh, also on the monthlies, uh, really nothing in the book down to 1888, uh, which was the Whoa. September of 2010 low. But uh, maybe that psychological $20 level, still a buck away from there, will provide some support in the SLV. But when you're making new lows, I always say if you're long, you got to go. You don't want to be long. Things are making new lows, picking bottoms and doing stuff like that is scary. And if you don't have a reference point, stuff can get ugly in a hurry. So... Gold, you still have that bottom that we made there a month and a half ago, but with silver taking out new lows. Very nervous from a long perspective on that. Um, interesting Friday. We actually had a lot of imbalances that were pushing, and like you said, they were pushing the gold around. They were pushing lots of stocks around. Somebody came in trying to sell APC. If you bring up the chart on this, you'll see a low of only 87, I think it was 61 or 87.80. Yep. Believe it or not, the stock traded down to one penny. Um, this is a market structural issue. So APC, they actually canceled all the trades. I think it was. I don't have it in front of me. It was 87 and change. They canceled everything below what the New York Stock Exchange did. All these ha trades happened on the New York St Stock Exchange, primary exchange. But what basically happened here is you had a huge seller at the close. One second before the close, it was trading at $90. And this seller, institutional seller, was trying to sell a ton of stock and actually 
took out the whole entire New York book and took it down all the way all the way to one penny a share. And then the stock closed at ninety ten. So it went down to one penny in one second and then bounced all the way back up to ninety dollars again. Obviously, um that's just crazy trading and that's um not really, you know, where the stock belongs. But at the same time, why are these trades allowed to happen? Um the NYSE actually used to have circuit breakers called liquidity replenishment points. They were LRPs. I know we're getting a little market structural here. We won't get too APC deep into the is details. a symbol on this for our think or swim uh, listeners. Yeah, APC, APC is the symbol, Anadarko Petroleum. Um, but they had these LRPs, liquidity replenishment points, and um, that was their circuit breaker on the NYSE. And basically, when a stock would hit its LRP, it means the stock would move, say, two points in a matter of just a couple of seconds. It would hit an, what it was called an LRP, where actually the designated market maker on the floor would halt. It would halt for a few seconds. The guy on the floor would look and say, "Okay, well, there's a huge seller here. I need to provide liquidity from him," and he would come in and step in and 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 print the stock at a more reasonable price. Well, the SEC made NYC get rid of the LRPs there a few weeks ago because they went to this whole limit up, limit down circuit breaker system. Um, they're still in testing process, obviously, and obviously there's still some few hiccups here because the stock went all the way down to one penny. So obviously the limit up, limit down didn't work there um, in the last one second of trading, and the stock was allowed to trade down to a penny. So we call these like flash crashes or mini flash crashes, whatever you want to call it. Um, so then the NYC had to come in and cancel their trades, and uh, this is kind of like a whole NYC. I told you so thing because they were saying to the SEC that they wanted to keep their LRPs just for backup and they weren't allowed to and this is what happens. So you have trades canceled and it just gets messy. So that's a little market structure uh, wake up right. here for you guys. <laughs> And just uh, just uh, you know the, the the real danger, and also you know when you're trading in the after hours in the pre market on these kind of situations is you know if you happen to be one of these people that buys it at some ridiculous price, and then it rebounds and you take you know, let's say you bought it at at ten or whatever, and then it rebounds up and it goes to forty, and then you sell it. it what ends up happening is you know your buy gets busted, and you know it depends or it gets adjusted, but. Uh, you know, be careful. I mean, when those things happen, you know, you can't take advantage of it. But uh, just the, you know, if the trades are busted, you can end up instead of having a big winner, you can have the opposite position on and a good loser. Yeah, I actually wrote an article in CFA Magazine just about exactly what you were saying. And uh, Chris Eikenberry there over at um, JC Trading actually interviewed him, and he gave some good quotes. He was just saying when they bust trades and they bust your buy and they don't bust your sell, you can actually make money, you know, and you're up money, and then all of a sudden they bust your sell and or they bust your buy and all of a sudden you're naked short the thing and you're losing money so it's all messy when they cancel trades i'm not a big fan of canceling trades but i mean you can't have a stock trading down to one penny i get it but they need to fix the little hiccups and not allow these stocks to trade down at these ridiculous prices in the first place um joel just uh let's move on to the, uh, actually the earnings here jake uh you were around we're gonna go to jake look here on the uh, benzinga news desk here uh it does have the campbell's report cpb they reported here this morning jake you there yep sure am hey jake uh what campbell's have to say in their report well they uh they really did a, a strong uh, report here they uh came in with about a 10.7 percent beat on the bottom line uh, analysts were expecting an eps of about 56 cents a share EPS came in at 62 cents for the third quarter here. Uh, BD on the top line as well. Uh, revenue estimates from the street were 2.04 billion. They came in at 2.09 billion. So it's pretty uncommon for this earnings season to be BD on the top and bottom line, especially for especially for a large brand like that. Uh, guidance is looking to uh, pretty good too. Originally, the guidance was looking to be. Um, 251 to 257 for the fiscal year. Uh, they just raised it to 258 to 262. So um, that's sending shares up in the pre market, both the earnings beat and guidance increase there. We've got Campbell's actually trading up a buck 10 here, almost a buck 20 actually now. 48.85 offered 48.80. So it's going to open up, it looks like a buck, well, it's trading up a buck 20 here right now. That's a new 52 week high for Campbell's there, Joel. Uh, what's your take on the charts? Uh, 52 week uh, multi year uh, high actually. Yeah, I believe it's an all time high you for the stock. Right. Just hit 48.85 uh, in the pre market. Uh, good news, sending this stock up. I mean, really, this uh, 
these uh, these food stocks uh, really went. When did Warren uh, pull that uh, that Heinz move? Uh, that was a few months ago, and really yep. since since then, everyone's just uh, everyone's been hungry for an acquisition, and uh, you know the food stocks have just been on a big rally. Uh, the only number I can give you here, 48.43 uh, was your high on Thursday. We are trading above that level, so that's minor support. But uh, got to be a few sellers in the book. It's somewhere along the line here, maybe uh, maybe 48 or something. So this might be an opportunity if it doesn't open as high, you know, because of the liquidity on the New York book. Maybe pick this up on the cheap, but uh, on the downside, 48.43 was the old high. I'd use that as support. If it takes that back out, I, I don't think I'd, I'd want to be on the issue. These food stocks can start marching here, too, though. We have seen it with some conservative issues there. They can start just marching. And it was February 14th. I guess it was Warren's Valentine's Day present to the Heinz shareholders there. That's when he announced his murder or his takeover of Heinz, obviously, at the 7250 level. And you're right, Joel. These, these uh, food stocks have just been marching ever since. I don't know if people are speculating that more of them might get bought or not. But you get the GIS. You get the cash. Kellogg's, all these other uh, Campbell's, all of them basically are flirting up with 52-week or multi-year highs. And uh, Campbell's here are going to make a new one again this morning. Obviously, if this thing continued to march, 50 bucks is absolutely enormous. But I don't think, I don't know if you're going to see this thing go up that much. But up a buck and a half, it's only another dollar to go. So we'll see as we go here. Uh, Chesapeake getting a new CEO here, Joel. CHK trading up 30 cents here in the pre-market. Um, Robert Douglas Lawler from APC. Interesting enough, there's APC again in the news. Robert Douglas Lawler is going to be the new CEO. Okay, uh, we are looking at 2065 here. Was the high uh, in the pre-market? Just made that a few minutes ago. So let's uh, let's keep an eye on that level. Uh, this stock has just been trying to get out of the doldrums here. Really has. Uh, Trading over the twenty-dollar level, you do have a bogey up here. Uh, twenty ninety-six uh, was the high uh, on Tuesday of last week. We'll keep an eye on that. I think if this thing's got back up above twenty-one, settled over twenty-one here, uh, you could be in the breakout mode. Uh, also had a high at twenty-one fifteen on March twenty-first. So that whole twenty twenty-one dollar level uh, key resistance for Chucky. Got a few merger and acquisitions here this morning. They're all a little bit smaller, but let's go back to Jake here. He can uh, break down, uh, I think we had three or four little mergers here today. Jake, you still there? Yep, we sure did. So um, we did have uh, Warner Chilcott. That's WCRX. Uh, this one's been rumored uh, for the past couple of weeks. A lot of speculation on this one. Uh, Warner Chilcott finally confirming that it's going to be acquired by activists. Uh, that is ACT for 2008 a share. Um, value in the transaction about 8.5 billion there uh, markets already priced in most of the move uh, by the time the yeah. stock was halted it was halted roughly flat this morning at 1935 uh, so 2008 you know it's only a less than a buck above that um, it's sitting get given a decent risk premium right now um, for the tra for the transaction but uh, kind of sitting below that uh, twenty dollar level there um, we also did have Yahoo uh, making making headlines yesterday, saying that the board had finally um, had agreed to acquire Tumblr for 1.1 billion. Uh, we've been hearing chatter that this is being uh, compared to the uh, Google acquisition of YouTube. So uh, it should be interesting to see how the analysts break this acquisition down today. Um, traders are kind of mixed on it. Uh, kind of bounced around. Uh, in the pre-market, uh, fell reef rough, roughly. Uh, looks like it's down about 1.3 percent right now. So, uh, just keeping an eye on Yahoo there and waiting for some more uh, analysis. They did say they weren't going to screw it up, literally, in a press release, and so <laughs> they're going to let Tumblr run itself. So, uh, Yahoo promising not to screw it up. So. That's interesting. That press oh, right. wow. Well, Yahoo's had one heck of a run here. Really, just uh, 25 to 27. Uh, 68 it's sprinted there just want to alert our traders here this out uh, this 2650 levels huge it is. had yeah had four lows between 2645 and 2657 we're trading below that in the pre-market so I would use that as resistance you even dip lower you dip down to the 26 level but uh, I think uh, investors will decide whether or not they're going to screw this up because if they can get the stock back up Above 2650, I think we can rally back into the 27 handle here. Uh, but I don't like I don't like how this thing looks under the 26 and a half level. 
Uh, you had a low at 25.96 uh, uh, on the uh, on March, excuse me, May 8th. So there's there's some room here if, for Yahoo to move today. Yeah, I'm trading down there in the pre-market. And I'm just looking at those couple of tops that we had basically in the 27 and a half area, 27.68, 27.43, uh, I think they were. So you go, you know, you could say I'm almost looking at a little potential head and shoulders. We don't want to chart chart patterns. Ooh. We don't do that that often. But obviously, if you trade a couple of days here in the whole 26 area, you start to form that right shoulder, and that's not that good looking there on a, from a pattern perspective. If you're a pattern trader for the long Longs. Um, Jake, was that everything uh, with the mergers and uh, acquisitions? There's a few other smaller ones. Um, WebSense confirmed that they're to be bought by uh, Vista Equity for 24.75 a share. So that's valuing the acquisition at one billion. But uh, the Yahoo and Warner Chilcott are the two uh, cool. biggest headlines of the morning. Oh. Uh, one other thing I wanted to note is that on Campbell's Soup, uh, there's a couple of analysts that are just being taken behind the woodshed right now. You got Deutsche Bank and J.P. Morgan, um, both getting completely cleaned out. Uh, they both had uh, in the $30 price targets for the company. Uh, so uh, J.P. Morgan had an underweight rating and a price target of 42 bucks, so it's way under. Um, while Deutsche Bank had a hold rating and a $46 price target. So watch for some upgrades from those two today. <laughs> <laughs> Follow on, mean, meaning nothing upgrades, but uh, kind of watching for those. <laughs> That's a... G- Jake's new to the show, and he's already piling on the analysts. Oh, already picking on a poor JP more again. <laughs> ah, they get some things right, too. Here, hey, Might as well go talk about the analysts. We do have some other upgrades and downgrades here this morning. Abbott Labs, ABT, getting upgraded at Goldman Sachs. Goldman's been right lately. We should give Goldman props, because they've done a lot of things uh, right with their calls lately. Um, but Not Abbott- this one. Not a Tesla, no. <laughs> no well, well, you got to give them a little. You can't be nice, eh? You can't be nice, Joe. You can't just say Goldman's done a good job. you got to point out their bad one. Anyways, let's okay. go back to Abbott Labs. 37.20 is where it's trading at this morning. Um, after closing at 36.59, Goldman Sachs is upgrading the stock here. Uh, I did have a couple highs, obviously, in Abbott here uh, just from a couple days ago. What were those, Joel? Uh, 37.47 uh, was your high on Thursday, the high on Wednesday at 37.70. So perhaps someone targeting that whole $37.50 uh, level. We'll keep an eye on that. I believe uh, this is uh, stocks trying. Uh, that that was, I think this is on the weekly. Didn't they do some kind of spin No, the ABBB, they spun off a company. So that chart should yeah. be adjusted, obviously, because you can see there's a $35 stock that all those shareholders got, which is actually a $45 stock now, if I'm not, or 47 <laughs> So that was a, a dang good split off. Um, actually, when you add those two companies up, Abbott Labs probably kicking around all time highs or near all time highs there again as well. So, uh, yeah, they, they spun off ABBB uh, there a few months ago. Other upgrades, downgrades, Jeffries downgrading triple BY, Joel. You always get the BBY, triple BY, though. Bed, Bath, and Beyond. Uh, no trades here to report as of yet, but it is offered down, so it does appear that it is going to open down here. Offered at 68.5, it closed at 69.11, so triple BY might be opening down on the day here. Yeah, this is uh, interesting. They were obviously uh, selling in the 69.20 level for the last four days. Four highs between 69.18 and 69.27. That is really, real rare here for a a NASDAQ $70 stock. So you got major resistance there. If you get a a chance to get a short off in that area, I'm going against uh, some pretty good good levels here. Uh, Coming back on the downside, three of the last four lows have been right around the 60, uh, 68.40 level. Uh, keep an eye on that. That's still uh, 70 cents away. Uh, below that, 67.90 was your low on Wednesday. So pretty tight range, really, for the last three or four days here at Bed Bath and Beyond. So let's see if uh, let's see if this downgrade can get it going to the downside. Lows downgraded. Oppenheimer trading down here, about 30 cents in the pre-market. Here's another stock that looks like it topped out uh, two days ago. Made a high of 43.55. Kind of had a weak day on Friday, despite obviously the market actually closing quite strong. Lows did not participate. Some of your other retail stocks didn't participate too. And now, obviously, with downgrade, it's going to be open down here again uh, but it has been a good month for Lowe's putting it all in perspective because this stock was down at 38 bucks at the beginning of May so it has been on a tear so I guess a little pullback here uh, isn't that big a deal if you're long the stock had a, yeah, had a little spike here uh, in the pre-market trading down to 42.30 just hanging out down 22 cents 
stocks had a nice run here. You had a low at 42.21 on May uh, on the 14th, so that's going to be your support level, 25 cents away from there. Uh, below that, it looks like you could sneak under the $42 level. Uh, you had um, some major support at 41.45 and 41.63, uh, the lows from May 9th and May 10th. Priceline making new all-time highs again here this morning. PCLN getting upgraded at Deutsche Bank. It's up six dollars and eighty-six cents right now in the pre-market, trading at eight twenty and a half. Closed at eight thirteen sixty-six. The stock's been on a tear uh, this month here. It's up over one hundred twenty-five points now. So just been pretty much. It's a couple down days in there, Joel, but it's been pretty much straight up here all month for Priceline. Uh, yeah, 821 uh, is what uh, put the brakes on it in the pre-market here, trading 50 cents below that. Uh, yeah, that stock uh, it's just had some huge ranges. I think, I'm think i not sure. Is this uh all-time high for the stock uh, in the race? Uh, losing yeah, the race I believe to Google here to 1,000. So uh, the only number I could give you, well, we've already taken out 821, 821.60 in the pre-market. Uh, if, you're, if you're looking for a fade of this stock, uh, just keep an eye on where it's trading in 925 to see uh, – see what the high is in the pre-market trading stocks been on a tear markets pulled back a point here since we started the show we are now down two points 1661 here joel um 1664 and a half is the high overnight that high from friday uh, i think we're going to take that out I think it's going to be the same thing again where we just slowly start you know every time it seems like we pull back two three points buyers come in they buy the thing up is that going to happen here again no no, no. uh-oh no you get no. bearish i think uh, yeah, well, you know, I've been bearish uh, since 10,000 in the Dow, so I just didn't want to bank it on that. No, I just, uh, I think you had the fluff uh, from the expiration on Friday, a lot of Good stuff, uh, you know, they yeah, you know, they popped it up and, uh, you know, got the high closes there for their marks or whatever. Uh, we are now uh, quite a ways away from that 1665, 75 level, 6450 is a high in the pre-market. I do not like the 1650 handle at all. I mean, we blew through it uh, on uh, yesterday, or excuse me, on Friday. Uh, got a minor support level at 1658.50, but uh, as it often uh, does so much, you know, it just flirts with the uh, you know the overnight low in the session, and then you know gets ahead of steam going. But uh, I think you know the market's been up 10 out of the last 13 days in May. I'm I'm looking looking for a little bit of a pullback this week. Well, there's Joel. He's getting a little bit bearish here. I'm First on the fence. First time in a long time. First time in a long time. Yeah, you've been bullish here for a little bit here. I'm still I'm still the overall bull, but I do see your point. A lot of times you do see, and we did see it on Friday, stocks were getting pumped high into the close there on some big buy imbalances as, you know, uh, as the third Friday option expiration was happening there. And sometimes you'll see that. You see it more usually at the end of the quarter and stuff, but sometimes on the third Fridays they move them around too. So I um, wouldn't be surprised if you see a little pullback here, but I think I've still got uh, my bull cap on that's our show for today guys have a great trading session and we will be back with you tomorrow morning